thank you for joining us. We have quite a good size uh, crowd uh, this evening. And uh, I'm real excited to talk about some of the products that we offer and how to prepare your images so that uh, you get the best print possible. Um, the idea, we, one of our first meetings, we talked about preparing images for printing, but um, I really didn't cover how it's necessary to uh, perhaps make adjustments or uh, uh, make changes to an image based around the type of product that you are printing to, whether it be a canvas print, a um, coffee mug, mouse pad, uh, et cetera. And so uh, all of our products that we print to uh, utilize uh, one of, you know, uh, four, three or four, di four different printing processes. And each printing process has their own set of strengths and weaknesses. And the actual prep work to make those products also have their own strengths and weaknesses uh, that are allocated by that product. Uh, and when I say product, I'm talking about the cards, I'm talking about the clay prints, the canvas, et cetera. Um, so uh, just, just so you know. Um, not every image that you print on a certain product is, is suited for that product. Um, could be a size issue, could be a color issue. Um, and not so much a, a size or, or a color issue with the file itself, but it could be a size or color issue that pops up with that particular type of product. So, so we'll go ahead and get started here. And um, uh, I'm gonna show you some examples of some of these items that we're talking about and, and some of the things that I'm talking about. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm gonna try to show it as best as I can on this little camera on, on my computer screen. But uh, we did some kind of test that a little bit earlier and it seems like it, it is able to capture some of the detail that I need to show you. But uh, the first thing we're gonna talk about, or I'm gonna uh, bring up is our fine art paper prints. Now, our fine art pa paper prints, which we loosely refer to as G clay prints or Z clay, however you wanna pronounce it, is essentially an inkjet process. Um, our fine art papers are, are impeccable in quality and the standards that they are produced by. Um, the printers that we use uh, are some of the latest and best inkjet printers for these types of prints. And these are basically wide format, super large inkjet printers. And the color output is just, is, is just phenomenal. It, it's just, that nothing compares it, uh, in today's day and age. And uh, it's a digital process, requires a digital file. Uh, generally though, we have the least amount of problems when it comes to prints with our G clay prints because the, the process is just so straightforward and streamlined for us. And it's really hard to get a bad print on a fine art paper unless there's an issue with the file. Occasionally, hardware issues pop up, which may uh, harm an image. But uh, but just in general, they they uh, they produce phenomenal prints. Now, uh, the key to a fine art paper print is going to be either the the as, as far as just that the appearance of quality is it doesn't just rest with the image, although the image plays a major role you know, how well your image, the, the white balance, the, you know, the tonal range, you know, especially depending upon what you're after, is going to play a huge role in the perceived quality of the print. But the true quality, it does not lie with the image itself, but lies with the materials of that, of that print. And that includes the inks, that includes the paper, that includes the texture, and the perceived and then the also the perceived quality is going to be based upon uh, 
well, you have perceived quality and then you have the actual quality, but to accent that perceived quality that your image is going to provide is going to be those styles. So you have your perceived quality, which is dependent upon your image file and the style of the print, but the, the actual quality, which is going to be based upon the type of paper you use and the type of inks that are being used. Now we use uh, primarily, uh, actually I, now all uh, of our inkjet prints, our clay prints are done with Canon uh, wide format printers. I believe it's the Canon Pro 4000. It's the, I think there's a new, new one that just came out. Uh, we haven't shifted over to that one yet uh, since our Pro 4000s are doing phenomenally. But uh, it is one of the best um, wide format printers out there as far as print quality and accuracy. And uh, but it also is the, uh, has phenomenal resolution. And I think it's 1,200 pixels per inch. Oh, I'm sorry, 1,200 dots per inch is, is what it prints at. Um, and, you know, once you get past about, you know, 300 to 600, it, it really doesn't really make much difference, but uh, uh, yeah, it's just, it, it produces the phenomenal results. But where people get lost is because Finer Works is a fine art printing company. They don't know what paper to choose. They don't know what style to choose. And, and the honest answer is that that really is going to be, you know, based upon your personal taste and what you think best uh, portrays your art, whether it be photography, uh, reproductions of watercolors, etc. Uh, one of the things that we offer is a sample kit, and I'll share my screen, and uh, I'm going to just show you where you can get it. Uh, so you can, uh, so under printing, over here under samples, order a starter kit. Okay, now. Uh, we're not asking for your money just so, you know, the star kits aren't meant for us to make money. They're meant for y'all to uh, really kind of see what we have to offer um, as far as the fine art paper prints, because we, we end up giving you back pretty much all that money in, in the form of a gift card that you can then apply to it and order later on. Uh, so, but it, it's, so helpful because it lets people see the different paper choices we have. We have, uh, I think, close to 20 very uh, fine art papers, uh, fine art slash photo papers uh, that we offer, which is one of the reasons that has propelled us to, to the popularity that we have within the fine art community is because of all these papers. Matter of fact, we want to add 20 more, but it, it, it gets to the, the point where it, it's very difficult to manage that many papers. Uh, uh, but uh, these papers, the uh, this starter kit will let you see the the different papers and feel the different papers, so you can decide, you know, what is what is suitable for you. So I'm going to hold up a few of these samples so you can kind of see how the surfaces vary. And with our papers, uh, there's there's really three types of surfaces um this and uh we have our gloss we have our satin and we have our matte and then we have uh various levels of texture and the texture is can be very different from paper to paper uh we have a lot of smooth surface papers since the smooth surface papers tend to be the more more popular ones but uh uh, but we also have a wide range of textures. Um, so, but first, let's talk about the, the how gloss and matte differ from, for obvious reasons, uh, is a gloss surface. Now, this is on our Hanumiel Photo Gloss Barita. Okay, now Barita is, is a property, is a, uh, you, you may have heard Barita, um, various paper companies, manufacturers offer Barita and has something to do with the, the coating, the ink receptive coating uh, on the paper because there's uh, cotton-based Barita, there's alpha cellulose-based Barita, fine art papers. 
Uh, but the Barita papers allow you to get incredible color saturation in D Max, which is a contrast, uh, you know, deep blacks in a print. So, uh, but this is, you can see the surface. It's relatively smooth. You can see a little bit of a texture to it, but it's very glossy. Here's another glossy one we have. Okay, and this is one of my favorites. Uh, this is a metallic, has a metallic or pearl based finish, has a little bit of a texture. And this is the Hanamiel Photo Rag, a metallic. Now, it's very different than the Hanamiel Photo Rag, the matte the, the, that, that's very popular with a lot of people because that's, that's extremely smooth. This has some, you can kind of see the texture. Is that pretty obvious to everyone? Or to it, a little bit of bumpiness to it. But again, you know, you, the sample kit will let you, you really feel. Now, uh, and then, um, and we'll talk about which images go best on these papers uh, in just a moment. Now, this is a satin. There's a little bit of a shine. And I have light, light yeah. overhead, so, so it provides a little extra glare. Has that little, that kind of, uh, uh, that, that, that almost that semi-gloss kind of look. Uh, there is a very, very subtle texture to a satin luster paper. It kind of makes your darks kind of, you, you see it more in your darks than you do in your light colors. Mm -hmm. but this particular paper, uh, extremely popular in the uh, photo community. Things like bridal portraits, uh, landscapes, uh, where there's a lot of realism in the photo. So you, a lot of photographers gravitate to this paper. So uh, anyway, so uh, the satin luster paper, the, the difference between this and say your Kodak Endura uh, luster or our Kodak professional luster, which, which we offer all, 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 the, all of those, is they're gonna be very lightweight uh, papers. This is gonna, is, is, is a fairly thick paper. It's uh uh, 300 uh, GSM, so it's it's gonna have some some weight as far as um, if, if this means anything to to you guys. Uh, it's 11. It's the the it's also measured at 11 millimeters, um, so uh, or 11 mil as as they call it. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, it, it definitely has some some weight to it. Uh, You'll probably want to do, if, if you are going to print large, uh, a large photo uh, landscape, and when I say large, I'm talking about like a 16 by 20 or large, larger, you're going to want to go with this paper over, say, your Endura or uh, your Kodak Endura or Kodak Professional Luster paper. Uh, because that, with that substantial, the, this increased weight, it's going to, frame much better. It's going to, you don't have to worry. One of the things we see with uh, frame prints is over time, uh, not with ours, of course, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, you will see over time that uh, frame prints, especially on, on very lightweight papers, will start to develop ripples as moist, if moisture uh, is able to penetrate into that frame. Uh, and so these, and it's more, no, especially noticeable with your your largest, your larger frame prints, uh, photo prints. Uh, and again, it's something that happens over time as the paper starts to, you know, I guess it, it absorbs moisture and, and uh, or moisture leaves it. So you start to get this kind of transition paper. These thicker papers are, are less likely to do that. So if you're gonna frame a photo print uh, and you want a luster surface, this is the way to go. Now we have our mat. Now this is our Entrada rag. I should have pulled out our Hanimel photo rag, uh, but it, it, and they look very much alike. Uh, they're, they're, they are slightly different, uh, but you can't tell the difference you know, from one to the other just if you have a blank sheet of paper. Um, uh, but it's gonna have a much more softer feel and there's not gonna be any sort of gloss, any sort of glare, I mean, Light's going to hit it fairly evenly and fairly consistently. Now, when you're showing art, when you're showing prints, that's extremely important. While this 
or these others give an image lots of pop, lots of color saturation, they look beautiful, okay? That glare can be distracting. If you don't want your prints to have any distractions, go with a matte surface. And where we really emphasize uh, matte surfaces over gloss is if your image has lots of detail. If your image has lots of detail, you know, we're not saying you can't, but we advise going with a matte surface because what's going to happen is when you hang up that artwork for display, light's going to hit it from various angles. And you may have details in that image that you want people to, to notice, to see. And if there's too much glare, uh, you're not going to notice that. This is going to be kind of hard to do, but there is detail in, in, in the hair, okay, that, you, that is very subtle. Now, and I have to hold this at various angles just for me to be able to see, or there's a chance that you're, the person that's going to be viewing your art is not going to be able to see that on any sort of paper with a gloss or glare. Um, the other thing about papers, our papers, is many of them have texture. Now, this, you can kind of see the texture. It's kind of subtle. This has become quickly, almost overnight, our most popular textured paper. It's our watercolor bright white. And uh, uh, it, it's kind of what we call our, our mid-texture range. We have our premium clay, which is much more coarse in texture. And we have... Uh, uh, more subtle texture like our uh, uh, Somerset Velvet. This is kind of a happy medium or kind of in the middle as far as texture range. Uh, generally, in the past, I've told people to say, if you have, uh, again, if you, you have an image with a lot of details, uh, go with a smooth surface, go with a matte surface, because um, you don't want that texture to become distracting. With, but you also have to kind of weigh, at, you know, the size of the print. You know, how close is that person going to be getting to the uh, to view that print? You know, a, a textured paper is really almost pointless if it's going to be a huge print that's going to be hung on a wall that people are going to be viewing from ten feet away. There's really no sense in having a textured paper because people aren't going to be able to see that. But from a sales standpoint, the texture can be very helpful because it can create perceived value because the person buying that print is going to be getting close. They're going to be looking at it. They're going to be looking at that detail. So texture has the benefit of adding value to a print. Um, again, go take a look at those, the various papers, order that sample kit, and, and so you can kind of get a sense as to uh, uh, what, what you like, because really that's what it comes down to, is what you like as an artist or as a photographer. So uh, that's all I'm going to talk about for about papers right now, and I'm going to go ahead and talk about canvas. Now, canvas, the process for us to print the canvas prints is pretty much the same as we do with our fine art paper prints. Uh, canvas comes in a wide range of, of levels, quality. Um, uh, can, there's canvas that's made for certain types of inks. Um, um, there's a canvas that has glossy surfaces, canvas that has matte surfaces. We try to cover the spectrum. Uh, our canvas comes in both a matte or gloss and also a metallic. And really the color accuracy is going to fall within our matte and gloss canvas. Those are gonna yield the greatest in color accuracy. And the reason for that is because those are printed with our Canon Pro 4000s. Those are aqueous printers, aqueous, pigmented inks, which means that they're water-based inks as the carrier. 
And those uh, are the same printers that we use to do our, our fine art paper prints. And those, those, uh, those printers are going to yield the most accurate results. And so if, you, if color accuracy is extremely important for you when it comes to canvas prints, you want to go with our matte or our gloss canvas. Now our sample kit also does include samples of the canvas. Uh, one of the things I want to point out though is that the matte and the gloss are going to be more expensive canvases. Um, and it's because the process to produce those the materials are more expensive. Now, if color accuracy is not as, you know, is not of the most extreme important, take a look at our, our artisan canvas. It is more of a matte surface. It, it doesn't have any, really any glare. They call it a satin, but it, I, I don't feel that it's a satin. I feel it's, it's a matte when I look at it and I feel it. The artisan canvas is, has, you know, incredible color accuracy, but it's probably only about 80% at the level that our matte canvas is. For most people, most photographers, most artists, they're not gonna, it's, it, their prints are gonna look stunning on it. So don't let that scare you away. But if you are trying to capture that particular uh, teal color or that particular, you know, reddish hue, then, then your, your matte and your gloss canvas are going to have the greatest potential for that. Uh, the artisan canvas and the uh, metallic canvas are printed with our uh, Epson eco solvent printing systems. Now, these are wide format, huge printers that were initially, uh, the solvent inks were initially designed for the signage and the commercial printing industry. It uses solvents as the carrier for the pigments. Um, and only in recent years have they achieved the color accuracy that aqueous printers look, that, uh, that like our Canon printers or Epson printers are still behind them, but they're, they're catching up, they're getting better. Now the benefit to those, those printers, to those uh, uh, that print on the, uh, the uh, uh, artisan canvas and the uh, metallic canvas is that we don't need to apply any sort of coating to protect the inks. Those inks secure and they're very durable. Uh, uh, they don't scratch very easily and they, they don't crack. Uh, so those inks on those salt that, that we produce with a solvent printer, again, the artisan and the metallic, are going to be much more durable. So if you're going to be putting a canvas print in a high traffic area, say in, a, in an office or, uh, you know, even in your home where people can brush up against it easily, uh, even though we coat the, the uh, gloss in the matte canvas, that still it's not going to have the durability that the artisan canvas is going to have. So if you are going to be put, putting that canvas print where someone can actually brush up against it and touch it, uh, go with the, uh, the artisan canvas or the metallic canvas. Uh, um, you think that, does that make sense, Melissa? Yeah. One of the things we notice is uh, with the artisan canvas, the difference is if your image has a lot of warm tones, uh, you may want to stay away from it uh, because it does seem to accent the warm tones. Uh, uh, I think it's just the nature of those inks or that's the particular profile that we're using. We do have trouble getting an accurate profile. We've, we've profiled the artisan canvas and it, uh, and I don't know if it's the manufacturer or what, but it, that profile seems to kind of shift around a lot. So we're, we're not, you know, as far as trying to soft proof it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't it's not do, an exact science. <laughs> yeah, not, not with, with that. Even case. so, even with using the ICC profile for the media, are you saying the, the warm tones still? Can yeah. Be and, and it, it also has to do, I think with the lighting, uh, I think how the inks, uh, or at least here in the office, you know, when we're, you know, just out in the lobby, how the inks uh, react to the uh, pigments uh, or how the light reacts to the pigments in that ink and reflect off it may kind of uh, accent that kind of warmer tone. So yeah, we do have a little bit more trouble 
uh, getting you know uh, very accurate prints. We'll have customers come in, uh, order prints on the artisan canvas, and say, hey, yeah, that that looks great, but it's not quite where I want to be. What can what can you guys do? And our our first suggestion is our, our one of the first things we'll do is we'll we'll take them to uh, one of the works uh, workstation here and we'll uh, see. Okay, can we? Is this color? Can we tweak it? Can we make some adjustments here? If it looks like it's going to be too much, you know, in scope for us to, you know, quickly be able to do, a lot of times we'll just say, hey, you know what? We have another canvas. Let's let's try it on that one, mm -hmm. um, and we'll print it on our regular matte canvas. And uh, usually that, you know, that that will will fix any issues if if those tones really aren't aren't where they want to be. Also, the the optics printers have a wider gamut. So there might be different levels of, 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 of color, of similar color within a region of, of that artwork. And uh, that kind of gets hidden, muddied up by a solvent printer, whereas the aqueous printer will be able to bring those details out. So if you have an image with a lot of detail, uh, in let's say a darker area and this is where where you see it more where and there's a lot of detail in those dark areas uh i would stay away from the artisan canvas it is you know going to be you know a more economical option but if you really want those details to show you we suggest going with a matte surface um so uh the other thing about canvas prints is most people want their canvas prints stretched and mounted. Now you don't have to order it stretched and mounted from us. You can have it, you know, just shipped to you, you know, unmounted, rolled, uh, rolled up, we'll roll it up, ship it to you in a tube and you can stretch and mount it yourself if you want, or maybe have a, a certain style of, of framing or display that you're, you're, you're trying to utilize. Um, a lot of, uh, uh, people paint over their canvas mm -hmm. print. So if you're going to paint over your canvas print, uh, apply embellishments, uh, uh, highlights, that sort of thing, we recommend uh, an unmounted canvas. Um, it, it just makes it easier, you know, tack it up against a rigid surface like some plywood uh, on your easel and, and uh, you can easily, you know, you know, apply paint. And then you stretch and mount it afterwards if, if that's what what you want to do. But uh, a lot of people uh, get a little lost when it comes to stretching and mounting canvas print as far as how they need to prepare their image. Now we have three different thickness levels. Um, we have a three quarters inch, we have a one and a half inch, and we have a two and a half inch deep stretcher bar. Now the the stretcher bars are the are the frames that the canvas wraps over. I should have brought one. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to printing and we're going to go over to canvas prints. So at the very top. Now a lot of people don't realize this, but Finer Works started out as a canvas printing company. We uh, um, uh, that's all that's all we did, just canvas prints, and then we added various fine art papers later on. And uh, uh, it, it, it's kind of an interesting story, but, uh, and I'll just touch on it briefly, but uh, as we started to, as we were printing canvas prints, people, uh, we were getting a lot of artists coming to us and then they said, hey, you know, I, I like uh, printing on canvas, but I'd also want to print on, you know, a, a textured paper or, or this or that. And uh, do you have some options where I can make some, maybe some smaller prints on, on uh, a textured paper? And so uh, I think our first paper was a Hennial paper called Albert Durer. We, we don't carry it now, but um, uh, that kind of propelled us into printing on fine art papers. Um, but anyway, so let's uh, talk about the different mounting styles. Oh, and uh, one other thing I, before I forget is we also have something called Belgian linen. Mm -hmm. Now, Belgian linen is, uh, we, we, we put it on our canvas, uh, but it, it is a linen and we have a natural finish and a white finish. Um, the, it, unless the white finish, uh, I'll, I'll be frank with you, is, is looks great, images look look nice on it 
but uh, when you're using a more natural base like linen, uh, uh, that, that's that's made out of. Uh, oh, let, me, let me see if I have a picture of it here. I don't think I do. Uh, but it, it it has a very kind of uh, uh, it, it's made out of uh, very uh, you know natural materials. You know uh, what is it? Um, is it, is it it's, it's the type of grass I think that it, that it comes from if I'm not mistaken are you I'm looking at thing right here oh you're asking what the yeah it, it's a uh, like I guess I, I like to think of of you know the texture almost of very fine threaded like burlap well, if you thought of burlap but if it was yeah, very coarse. Texture, yeah that's what I'm, um, so it's very but, coarse yeah but I've had a couple really, of things printed on it yeah, so if you're doing a natural finish, uh, it's gonna, you're not gonna have a, a white image. It's gonna always look very brownish, very kind of kind of warm toned um, because there is no white in it. But if you get the white finish, it, it'll have a very white tone, but you lose, the, the thing is about the white finish is you lose some of that detail. Uh, Correct, it's uh, like a coating almost to the, on top yeah, of it, which yeah. hides it. Um, in that situation, I'd just do a matte canvas print instead, uh, personally. Um, but let me, let's go to the mounting styles um, for forget. So not mounted, I don't know why it's listed twice. Um, not mounted, obviously, uh, it's gonna, it, like we said, it's, it's, you know, we'll send it to you in a shipping tube. Now the, when it's not mounted, you're gonna have an additional uh, two inch border. It's approximately two inches that's going around the, the uh, print. So if you're, your print is uh, uh, 16 by 16 uh, and it's not mounted. The actual cut sheet size is going to be 20 by 20 because you have two inches on all sides. Um, so that border goes, goes outside and that'll, you know, usually give you enough. So if you want to stretch and mount it yourself, you have something to grab onto. Um, uh, we do mount on artboard or mat board. Uh, and, and there might be a need for that in some cases where you're trying to drop the canvas in a very shallow frame where the, the rabbit or the inset in the frame is not very deep. Uh, the artboard uh, mounted option will allow you to frame in a wider uh, uh, choice of frame moldings. Um, same with uh, the extra thick and the gator board mount. But uh, really where, where canvases look best is when they are stretched and mounted. Mm -hmm. Now stretched and mounted means that we are wrapping the canvas around a, a, a wooden framework. Uh, it's a wooden frame. It's the canvas wraps around it on the, you know, the surface, you know, kind of if you, if you tap, it's almost like tapping a drum, but the canvas wraps around and then underneath is secured by staples. Um, and you have a choice where you can have the image go right to the edge, like here or here or here, or you can have it wrap where it goes, where the image itself also wraps underneath. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, there's some more examples where you can kind of visualize that. And you want to be mindful with gallery wraps, uh, with your signature, for instance. Uh, remember that in this case is, um, if you look on there, it'll say 0.7 inch thick you're going to be losing some of that image to the side right there and the white's gonna be behind the wood bar. So if there is a face on the side of your uh, image or again, your signature, you wanna be mindful that um, of how your image is gonna be placed on that gallery wrap. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little exercise in Photoshop that will let you actually create almost like a template. So you can kind of see what wraps and, and you can make adjustments uh, before you order. So uh, if, if you just, uh, let, let me just kind of create a, a, uh, a document in Photoshop and I'm gonna create this as, we'll make this document say, I'll change this to inches. And I'm gonna we'll just we'll do something simple. Let's say, uh, I don't know, uh, 20 by 20. Um, I'll set it at, you know, let's make it a little bit smaller so my computer doesn't, 
like get bogged down here. We'll make it 10 by 10 at 300 pixels per inch. So I have a, and let's say I want to do a 10 by 10 canvas. Yeah, it's kind of small to stretch and mount, but we'll, we'll again, we'll just use 10 by 10, 10 just so uh, uh, the computer doesn't run slow. <laughs> so here I have my 10 by 10 canvas and our, or my 10 by 10 document. And let's say I want to stretch and mount it, but I want the, the sides, I want the image to wrap around the sides. But what I'm going to do with my canvas, and this could be, you know, you could have a, you know, 16 by 20, you know, 24 by 30, whatever size you want. Uh, again, this is just, uh, we're using 10 by 10 example. But what I want to do is I want to uh, keep in mind the amount that's going to be wrapped around the side. So I'm going to drag a little guideline here and and it'll help illustrate this. And this is my 10 by 10 inch area. Is that, is that readily okay. visible to you? Mm -hmm. okay. But I want to stretch and mount it on a, our thick stretcher bar, which is one and a half inches. So that means on the sides, it's gonna be one and a half here, it's gonna be one and a half here, one and a half up here, and one and a half here outside of this area right here. That's gonna represent the sides. So what I'm gonna do, so if you take one and a half on each side, on the left and the right, okay, and you times that by two, that's gonna be three. Mm -hmm. Same with the top and bottom. So I'm gonna come over here and say canvas size. I'm gonna change the size. I'm gonna add three. I'm gonna change it to 13 by 13. Okay, now, I'll zoom out. Now this is going to represent my one and a half inch sides. Now when I bring my image, and I'm going to come over here, I'm going to say place embedded, and I'm going to take a shutter stock image, just a, uh, we'll take, we'll take this, looks kind of weird. Okay. So I'm going to bring that in here and I'm going to click, I'm going to hold my shift key down and I'm going to drag it to, to scale it. And you can see, now I let it kind of sit there, you can see what part of the image is wrapping around the sides. You can see that this area is going on the sides, all of, just about all, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Mm -hmm. This area is going around the sides. I don't know why it's doing that, but anyway, let me. I guess just my pointer should be able to show you. But everything outside of this box is going around the sides. Now that doesn't look real good from the perspective of when I print it and I'm looking at that canvas straight on, it's going to look like. Like there's no lips. <laughs> yeah. Or you're going to lose part of the mouth. Yeah. It's going to look like that because these represent the sides. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so what you have to do is keep in mind what is going to wrap around. And this is where a lot of people get in trouble is they, they put, uh, they, they do a, uh, a gallery wrap of say a family portrait and everyone's the top of everyone's head is 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 wrapped around the top of the print so so they're so it's like you just see this much of their of their their head or sometimes you only see this much of their head <laughs> you know depending upon you know the, the composition uh the other thing is artists it it happens so often i mean it, it's it's uh, is their their signatures are down here in the lower left or lower right hand corner, and their signatures get cut off. Now I might be okay, you know. You might not mind, you, especially if you're gonna sign, you know, sign it in your prints by hand. But a lot of artists do want that signature to be visible. Mm -hmm. So before you do a gallery wrap, keep in mind your subject matter within your image, uh, whether or not 
too much of that subject matter will wrap around the sides. Now, there is a solution if you don't want your sides just to be plain white, is you can always color the sides. Now, our system, when you're ordering a canvas print, lets you choose a color. I'll kind of show you how that works here. Um, or you can do it in Photoshop, and I'll show you how you can do that too. But if you order online, I'll click on order online, and I'll select, uh, I'll select this image right here. Um, and I will select a, a uh, canvas. And let's see, it doesn't matter what canvas type, wants. you just do the artisan archival canvas. And I'll do a thin stretched and mounted. And then as far as size, I'll do a, uh, let's say I'll do a, a 12 by eight. Now the thin stretch and mounted means that there, the image does not wrap around the sides. I would have to choose a thin gallery wrap. Mm -hmm. So, or a thick gallery wrap or grand gallery wrap. So again, the sides are just white, plain white. That's perfect if you're gonna be putting it in a, a frame that's where the sides are not gonna be visible, or you may wanna hang it unframed and you can hang it on frame because we don't put, unlike a lot of companies, we don't put staples on the sides. We put the staples on the back. So, so your the sides of your canvas print are always going to look clean. Mm -hmm. But you can adjust the color. There's a little color picker right here, and you can kind of, you know, you, you can type in if you know what the RGB values are that you want. Um, so you can choose a color. Mm -hmm. And you can and, find those RGB values in your uh, Photoshop too. If there's a particular color that you really want to match in your art to the sides, you can grab those and input them in there. Now there is another way you can do this. And that means that you would choose a gallery wrap, but you can still control the color. And what you would do is, let's, let's say I'm going to resize this image back to a 10 by 10. Okay, and then on this bottom layer, or uh, I am going to, well, first I'm going to choose a color from in here. Let's say I, I want the sides to match, I don't know, this kind of yellowish kind of color. And I'll use the paint bucket tool. And I can choose the exact color I want here. Now then I'll save this. Okay, and I'll, I'll save it as a, just a low resolution JPEG. Um, entitled, okay, and I'll just replace that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back over here. I'm gonna change the file. I'm gonna add a file. Select file. And we go to desktop. And that wasn't it. Where did that file go? Oh, did I? Did you leave it as an? Oh, yeah, as a PSD file. Yeah. Say as let's we'll say I'll just save it as JPEG. Something to note there is the file types that we are able to accept. Um, when uploading yeah we don't uh support jpegs uh our, i'm sorry PSD. PSD. um uh it'd be nice if we could but too much it's going on with those files that <laughs> it break things <laughs> uh so so we don't we don't bother with the those. so anyway so i'm gonna upload that file mm -hmm. Yeah, and then if you notice there, it does tell you the file types we do take, which is the JPEGs, the PNG, TIFF, and the, the BMP right there, so. So now I'm gonna select that file since, uh, and boom, it, it adds it here. But I'm gonna change this now. I have that file selected, and obviously I don't want it to look like that. <laughs> I want the sides to be exactly the way I set them up or the exact color. Um, and, uh, and and it may not be a color. I may want to, you know, uh, create 
you know, kind of uh, mirror the, 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 you know, part of the image, you know, like, you know, like maybe this part of the image. And, uh, you know, do that kind of effect, but on all four sides. Mm -hmm. um, Which would be like mirroring, yeah, mirroring the image around. Images. Um, and uh, so I'm going to set this, uh, what was the side? Uh, 10 by 10. Okay, oh, look, I forgot. I got to go back. So again, I don't want it to look like that. What I'm going to do is I want to do a thick stretch or a thick gallery wrap in this case. I'll do a 10 by 10. And there we go. I achieved that same sort of effect, but I controlled what's going on the sides there. Okay. So, uh, one thing you want to just kind of keep in mind is if you are going to be printing a, a, a canvas print and you want to control the sides, then choose that that gallery wrap and do and, and format your image the way you see, you know, that, that you need to in Photoshop. It's kind of it's it's really neat. We'll get people that will you know do. Uh, can I delete that layer? There we go. Uh, They'll do these kind of these uh, rough edges around around the image. They'll, they'll you know they'll, they'll create these kind of edge effects, and then they'll uh, put it on the canvas so that maybe uh, this part of the you know the color kind of goes up to about here, mm -hmm. and the image will kind of fade into it. So so you know you have a lot of choices as to what you can do mm -hmm. with it. So um, let me see. Um, I think that's all I wanted to talk about with the canvas. Uh, I think that, can you think of anything that I might have missed, Melissa? No, I mean, on the finishing, um, I know uh, running geo galleries and then running galleries that I have done, I've liked our finishing on canvas with the uh, professional tape and wired hanger. Um, uh, by default, we have a black boarding that'll go on the back of the canvas. But when you do the professional tape and wire hanger, what I like about it is that it shows the canvas. And what's great about our canvas is it's not like a lot of other companies. It's not very. It's not a plastic. It you can see uh, you can see the quality of it. And I think the professional tape and wire hanger lets you. It's just completing the presentation, um, and I think it looks stunning when you get it as a consumer and, and you a collector has bought your piece that um that finish at the end of it is probably like one of the best i think features that we do uh at finer works and i used to do canvas station so i know it's hard <laughs> but it's a it's a nice finish yeah yeah it's uh uh working stretching mounting canvas prints gives you uh, a lot of insight that things that you would uh kind of you wouldn't think about. Um, you know, I spent years building up calluses on my hands, stretching and mounting canvas prints, and uh, discovering, hey, you know, this this works, this doesn't. And uh, Melissa's been there as well. So it's uh, we at Fine Works. We, you know, even though uh, fine art papers has become our our mainstay as far as what we produce. We still produce quite a bit of canvas prints. We do. There, and there is a huge quality uh, to our canvas prints. The folds on them are nice and tight and great. Um, the the stretching on them, it's just a really nice quality. And everybody who works in canvas stations and in, in all of the stations of Fine Works is trained really well in to making. Them. And a lot of us have artist backgrounds. So uh, we put a lot of that into our work there. So yeah, and some matter of fact, uh, uh, one of our newest hires for um, working in our canvas printing section, um, that's all he did in his prior job mm -hmm. <laughs> is stretch and mount canvas print. So uh, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a very, Kind of a, it, it, it's not the easiest thing to do um, to get right, uh, especially when you do it by hand. We, we do have machinery for stretching and mounting, but it does not offer the precision 
that uh, that eyeballing that you, it does have, yeah, that human yeah. quality to it. You know, I mean, one of our stretching and mounting machines that uh, it was in excess over twenty thousand dollars, and it just sits there. I think it's a coat hanger now. Yeah, pretty much a coat hanger, <laughs> yeah. and and you know a workout too. Whenever we got to move it, but um, <laughs> yeah, you want to. And and it is where a lot of us are are like I know I'm probably one of the pickier people that had been there on canvas and doing the finishing just because I've worked like I said from a gallery that's accepted uh, canvas prints and I know what I like and I know what the end customer is going to be picky about um, and there there's just um, a I won't even say there's a precision even in the, the stapling that goes back there. What I've what I've liked about a lot of our canvases is we actually have very nice clean stapling on the back. It looks good. So your your print looks good in front and back. Yeah, uh, and and that's important, especially if you're you're going to be presenting your prints to a gallery to carry. Is that they're they're going to want to carry stuff that's quality mm -hmm. and workmanship. There, there's uh, uh, I'd like to just kind of mention this. Is there is companies out there that are producing these canvas prints that look fantastic. I mean, you're talking about the greatest and, you know, the corners are perfect uh, and they're done by machine. And you think, okay, that, that's great. And th these canvases, they're, they're very inexpensive and they won't last. Yeah. So uh, be I, careful when, when if, if you you get what you pay for. Exactly. They, they look great. You know, you buy something from Wish. Uh, it looks great. The, <laughs> oh, the I don't moment, know. You can you should see my Basquiat that. that came in. It didn't look great. <laughs> yeah. You know, there, there's a lot to say about quality. Um, so if you want that that canvas to last, or if you want to, you know, it to sell, you know, you, you want you know, a gallery to carry it, you know, you're, you're going to have to invest a little bit in it. And, and we, we try to offer something within that economical market as far as canvas prints. And we do that with our artists in canvas. Uh, but we know that a lot of our artists do want, you know, something that's going to hold up for years to come. And so that's why we've, we, we like a lot of, a lot of printing companies that offer canvas prints, they've gone the route of, offering these very cheap canvases with cheap material, cheap inks. And we tried not to really go down that path too much because we know it, it uh, we know where the demand is for us at least, you know. I mean, again, on the gallery side, um, there's a very well-known company, I won't say the company's name, uses a very cheap canvas thing. These are, like I said, they're, they're made to be mass produced. The thickness of the canvas on it was kind of thin, kind of think of the plastic that you get for a table cover. And that was, and it's maybe just a couple of millimeters thicker than that. Mm -hmm. They get stretched on. Now here's the thing about Texas, Arizona in the South where we get temperatures of 100, 105 degrees and people put these canvases in their car. Um, I've had customers come right back to the gallery with those because the corners melted and that, so that's something to know you're going to have, if you're going to have that in uh, your, you know, what you put your art and photography on is part of your reputation. So if sub quality stuff is going out where people are saying I would never buy it at, from either the gallery or the, the artist or photographer again, because their stuff is just not quality. I could go get it on a Xerox machine. There's, yeah, there's yes. a difference. Uh, now deckled edges. Okay. Uh, uh, Deckled edges are, are a term that we refer to when a print has that kind of that torn look uh, that where the, the edges are torn, where uh, 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 kind of an old fashioned style to it. And uh, uh, one of the things that uh, we've always struggled with is get that deckled look right. You know, there, and there's different techniques to do it. We finally found the right combination uh, right process i feel where where i'm truly proud of our decal prints we've been doing decal prints for a few years mm -hmm. but uh, only recently did we start doing them as borderless and i'm going to hold up uh a framed floated deck. I, I, I had one that's unframed but i'll hold up this framed one yeah i think you get to uh, that glare 
there's not too much we kind of I'll step back yeah you can kind of see that distressed look kind of all around the edging yeah now one of the things we also did and Melissa did a video and she's going to show you how you can order this mm -hmm. but where you can have your deckled edge print kind of float and you can kind of see from mm -hmm. this angle how it it's at not at, that looks like it's not actually touching the uh, base okay. mat, yeah. okay? Nor is it touching the, the glass, it's, it's in between. Now, the, the secret is there's a, there's a piece of uh, acid-free foam core <laughs> that's supporting it. Mm -hmm. uh, how that light's hitting it. Uh, it it's actually looks really good right there. Um, okay. Yeah, and that's where you see that kind of like a drop shadow effect onto it, which again, um, when you do deckled edge, um, that's something uh, an end buyer really, really wants is that whole presentation of that that floating finish inside there. Now, yeah, really cool. just just for friends and family, I've done about uh, four of these uh, <laughs> edge prints floating in a frame. And uh, uh, like I said, uh, Melissa will is going to, is compiling a video uh, that we'll post on YouTube where where you can actually see how to do it. It's a little kind of kind of uh, we, we didn't quite figure out the correct user interface, you know, workflow to, to make it obvious, but so, but, uh, but she'll make it look easy and, and you'll see that it is easy to order. Now it's you don't have to have it, it. you can just order it deckled or you can order it in, and I don't have an example here to show you, but you could have it with where the, it has a border it has a border say it's approximately an inch border and then the you know at the edge is, is torn yeah we so, have the example on our website um also there so if you need let, to let, let me share it, screen it, yeah uh it's not the the best graphic i don't think uh oops hold on let me hit share screen get back to here um actually Actually, yeah, it's, it's kind of a simulated look, but I'll come over here, fine art paper prints, under styles, mm -hmm. um, style options, it's kind of bigger here, where we have the, uh, here we go. So we have the regular deck, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you wanna zoom in a little and you can show probably the edges a little better. Uh, actually, that's as far as I can zoom in. Maybe oh, okay. uh, right there too gives a good size wrap up. Torn edge. Okay. Uh, so you see uh, that distressed look that goes around it. One one of the things to keep in mind is so if you choose, let's say, a sixteen by twenty decal tor torn print, because it's torn by hand, you know, there, it could be off by a millimeter or, mm -hmm. or so. Uh, usually that's not a problem because you're not trying to contain it in a mat. You're trying to contain it over a mat. The other uh, decal option that it, oh, that's not it. Where is it? With the border. So you can see that the image abruptly stops, but then you have uh, that torn look mm -hmm. going around it. Now that image that, let's say the, the image itself, let's say this is a, 24 by 16, okay, uh, for the scale. Uh, this will add an extra one inch all on all sides. So the, the cut tor torn sheet size will be uh, two inches larger because of the one inch at the top and bottom and the left and the right. So uh, uh, that's, uh, again, the, those are the two decal options that we have. Um, and uh you know it's it's a style when you're ordering a fine art paper print you can easily choose it now one thing i want to mention about a a deckled print a deckled edge print or a torn print is your more softer papers are going to provide the best torn edge look your more rigid papers are going it they they work Okay, but they might not look as nice. Um, uh, I'm curious, is it by, do you uh, disable the ability to order deckled edge, like on say on things like uh, 
the metallic paper or or is that um, no we like don't those would be the things i would think the, would be hard <laughs> yeah yeah we we thought about doing that but uh we uh, there's instances where it looks just fine um uh like i, I have to kind of i can't really i'm going to angle the uh <laughs> Slightly down. Okay, yeah, we see yeah. that. We do. Yeah, um, it's a big twenty-four by thirty-inch print. So, and it's got a bunch of stuff on top of it. But uh, yeah, that, uh, that was on our satin luster paper. That's oh. on our satin luster paper. Um, it looked pretty good, yeah. you know. So, um, uh, yeah, and, and that was kind of one thing. So, yeah, do we, you know, when we've tried it before. Uh, it it really my, my concern when we we went with a borderless when we had the bordered ones I wasn't too concerned because it, I was uh, yeah okay yeah you have a torn edge but it's on the border so it's not affecting the image so when we added the borderless version of the torn edge I was kind of worried whether or not that 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 how that would impact the 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 look. Mm -hmm. uh, where it's tearing right into the inks and yeah, works works out well, I think. So, Are they going uh, into the image about a depth of what one eighth or about an eighth, eighth of an inch? Okay. So if you're doing a but we we do we do add some bleed to the image, so we expand the image. So if you order a sixteen by twenty, um, we're going to expand that image by about an eighth of an inch on all sides. Mm -hmm. uh, that way, when we tear it, you know we're you know we're tearing away some of the image but it's not leaving any 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 border if um if like what's going um if you have your image and a matte frame think of it like that the matting kind of goes about about an eighth over the image yeah yeah exactly exactly um so um anyway uh really quick did you want to go uh just kind of show um maybe the the stickers and okay. the yeah yeah this this is one of the most fun things that we we added recently uh we've been doing stickers for a while but uh frankly i i i've never really liked the stickers <laughs> <laughs> that we offer and I, i'm kind of I don't know why we just didn't discontinue them. Actually, I know why because we had we used them that, were, that, that well, continued to like them. Well, there was uh, a lot of people who used them more like uh, product labels for their their uh, stuff, uh, and that kind of completed a a presentation look for a lot of our customers that wanted to have their logo or something along those lines to seal up their plastics. But now, yeah. So now we're actually doing. Uh, uh, what I call real stickers. Okay, now these are stickers are printed on vinyl using solvent ink, so they're very durable. They're not going to scratch. Um, actually, it's the same uh, ink system that we do on our artisan canvas and our poster paper. Um, uh, so we we print on these, and then we have a machine that actually cuts out the contour. So you can do a custom contour sticker uh, any size as small as uh, two by two up to I believe 16 by 16 let me sh go to that page on our screen so you can kind of see some of the information about it um, and then I'll show you this example a little bit more closely but uh, uh, let me go back here stickers um, now and and this is what one of those things where a lot of customers have have uh really there's they they've demanded that we do something about our our current stick or the previous sticker options and i say hey we want stickers like this so we're trying to meet that demand where especially with artists uh a lot of artists like to produce these stickers that, that they give to their friends or uh they use to help promote you know their art and where they can put little graphics and so forth so uh so it can be found under cards and graphics uh did i click on it let's okay, just run a little slow um and right now we only have one type of media which is basically a vinyl now we're going to look we're, we're looking at adding a 
uh, they call it kind of a, a holographic kind of effect. It's not really holographic. It's, it's more of a kind of a, it captures the light and kind of gives a rainbow of color, kind of an iridescent look. I, I never, I don't quite get why they call it a holographic material because it's not holographic, it's just iridescent um, vinyl. Um, but we can do up to two by two, up to 16 by 16, or we can even do custom sizes between those, those sizes. And they come in batches from batches of 25 all the way to batches of 1,000. Now, uh, prepping an image for stickers is, is important. Uh, and one of the things you want to uh, uh, first determine is what style you want. Now, we have the, uh, just a rectangular or square, depending upon you know, the dimensions. Uh, we have a circular or oval. We have a contour cut, and if you look closely, you can kind of see that with the contour cut that there is a, a border, an outer border. So it cuts around this outer border. And then we have a contour cut without a border. We call it a, a, a contour cut full bleed. Now, I'm going to confuse everyone here. Um, I'm going to, uh, let me stop sharing my screen. I'm going to confuse everyone and I'm going to show you that when you do a contour cut full bleed, what you're actually, this is what it, the sticker looks like. It does have a border, but when you pull that sticker away, you can see that, that there is no border on that sticker. Okay. So, uh, so that is the contour cut full bleed. Now, if you do a regular contour cut that doesn't have bleed, then the sticker, see if I can do this, ah, can't get it. The sticker will peel away with that border. Mm -hmm. So that's how, how it's different. So it may, when you get it, when you, if you order it, it may look like it has a border, but it really doesn't. It's a, uh, it's a full bleed sticker. Yeah. Okay. So, so that, that edge is just gives you something to pull away from. So what happens is we have a, a something, it's a plotter cutter, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, uh, that reads these registration marks as we, after we print a batch of, of images, um, and then it goes around and it cuts out the outline and then it does or first it does what something called a kiss cut where it's not fully penetrating through the back. It's just cutting that vinyl and then it does a full penetration cut where it cuts around the contour and that's how you get those uh, full bleed contour cut stickers. We've only been offering this for two days now, mm -hmm. uh, two, or, two or three days. And uh, it's, it's already gaining some popularity and the uh, contour cut is uh, the most popular. Um, one, uh, I will caution people, um, th this is kind of new for us. So, uh, so we are still trying to uh, tweak the machinery, the equipment to do the cutting, but there is uh, some allowances that have to be made so when you are doing a contour cut, if you're doing a very small sticker, okay, we have to do a little bit of, you know, cutting into the image, okay, so that, you know, we don't risk, you know, you know, here's an example. We don't risk this. This was kind of a trial ones where you can kind of see a little bit of a border. Oh, we yeah. don't want that to happen. So we were tweaking, where do we adjust? So we figured we need to bring it in a little, that, that kiss cut in a little bit more. So, uh, so if your image is very small, okay, um, uh, there is potential and it has a lot of, a lot of contours. To, there is potential where we say, hey, you know what, uh, you know, that image, it's, it's, it's great and all that, but it may it's not work that well. A little bit too complex for for the machinery. So, uh, try to keep your contour cut stickers. You know, don't get overly complex with with the 
the shape if, if you're going to do it because you may run into problems or you may have to go bigger in order to be able to accommodate those those uh, very detailed cuts. Uh, uh, so um, with stickers, it's it's done on vinyl. Uh, the the color saturation is it looks it's incredible. Oh, uh, before we let, let me mention one other thing. I totally forgot okay. to bring this up on the rectangle and circular. Mm -hmm. Is that if you do if you select these options now these are are essentially full contour cut bleed stickers, mm -hmm. but you're, we don't, but the contour is in the shape of either a rectangle or a circle. So we don't trace around any elements of the image. Your image is cropped to that size. And uh, uh, as an example, I can actually do a quick example here. So if I select a, uh, let's, let's select this photo here again. And I select a uh, a uh, sticker, and I select we'll say rectangular, um, and I select four by four. Or I'll, I'll do custom size. Let's say I do a uh, a uh, actually a five by four. Okay. So what will happen is it'll cut around. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, some of the image gets gets lost on the sides. You can kind of see what I mean if I click it. These areas outside that red box get lost. Uh, same thing with a circular one. So uh, uh, there's no, again, there's not going to be any border. It's going to be cut like like what you see here. But if you, you do a circular, um, and I do, uh, you know, I'm, I, I can do a, a actual circle and I select six by six, but Let's say I want it more oval. I might do uh, 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 five by four again. Which um, will give you oval. Yeah, you know, that'll create an oval. You see how you, you don't have a perfect circle. You have an oval. Mm -hmm. And again, if I click on it, you can kind of see it doesn't. It 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 shows you the area, but doesn't truly show you that the crop right. box is kind of a little misleading. Yeah. I use this, but if I drag this. It's better for centering your image um, in this yeah. case. Yeah, and then I'll bring it here and you see it kind of shifts them up. Mm -hmm. So uh, and the, so your sticker will be a, a full oval. And again, you'll have that little border, but uh, that border won't be on the sticker. It'll be just more of a, just a border to kind of hold the sticker in, in the... One other question uh, that kind of came up was um, on specialty products uh, was the color matching. Mm -hmm. Is okay. that because it's a totally different thing because we we don't give ICC profiles on mugs mm -hmm. um, on the glass uh, or or the tiles and things and there is a reason and I'll let you explain that. Yeah, the reason is simple. Um, and I, I'm going to hold up a. Uh, we're going to talk more about this. I'm going to hold up a tile. Okay, you can see this is a say mm -hmm. uh, was eight by eight I think. Yeah. That's um, now our tile. We, we do a ton of these. Uh, um, I think we sh just today alone. Now we had some big orders, but today alone, I ship. I think we ship out about hundred tiles. Um, uh, and it's not something we. It just happens to be we just attract people that want tiles. I guess it's not something we ever really put a lot of effort in promoting. Um, but anyway, but but the tiles. Uh, it looks has nice gloss finish, mm -hmm. but these tiles you can't get. At, at Home Depot, I can't go buy go to Home Depot and, right. and produce you know these phenomenal you know photo quality tiles. Um, and give me one second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go grab one. <laughs> photo on it. One second. I'll be right. <laughs> and those tiles that we have, the ceramic tiles, when you select them on our page, I think the small size we do on them is four by four. But as you saw, There's they can go large. Four by four. Mm -hmm. um, now, the, the key to getting that image saturation has to do with how these tiles are treated. Uh, there is a polymer coating that is that uh, it that goes over these tiles, and that polymer coating is what's necessary to allow the the, the dyes of the ink. It, it uses certain uh, we we print on a transfer paper using a certain type of printer that 
prints these dye-based inks that when heated to a you know very extreme temperature converts to a gas and that polymer coating also converts somewhat to a gas or to a almost like a gel so it's very you know microscopic thin but it's enough for the that gas to fuse uh, of those inks to fuse into the surface and uh while you can technically you can sublimate to a regular tile it'll just wipe right off uh because the, the, the inks will sol after they form the gas will solidify onto the surface and won't really stay on there mm. so you need a surface with a polymer coating same thing with the ceramic coffee mugs mm -hmm. so but the question uh uh to get to the to, to answer that question um uh as far as uh uh profiling mm -hmm. these items like like this ceramic tile mm -hmm. is we have run across too many instances where the white point of these surfaces change and uh as these, and I guess one of the things I want to talk about with the metal prints, but I'll talk about it here, is the, the, the actual manufacturer, we, we get these from several suppliers, for instance, okay, we, two, two different suppliers here in the country. One's always, we, we keep buying out their stock, I think, <laughs> and, the, and the other one uh, uh, always kind of our backup. But regardless, uh, wherever the, these, like for instance, this one was made in China. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and most time these are made in China or Mexico. Um, the consistency with the manufacturing process is just not there. It's not like with our fine art papers mm -hmm. where, where these are consistently made the same way year after year, batch after batch. Every now and then you might get a, a slight, slight variation. Yeah, variation in the batch, but but generally, and once the manufacturers find out about it, they they correct it. Um, and we've run into that with uh, papers and canvas, mm -hmm. but uh, with with the manufacturers, it's like, hey, you know, here you are. This is, you know, this is what's available. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so you may get, we may get, and we even see it within the same batch, where that white point is slightly off. Mm -hmm. from one from or not off but slightly different the, the brightness level of that white is is slightly different from tile to tile it's usually not that extreme uh unless it is you know ordered in at different time frames mm -hmm. uh usually the, within the batch themselves are pretty consistent but we do run into that but you know if you prep your image uh and and we had a profile and we profiled this and uh, that's a whole nother story as far as how difficult it is to to profile some of these items but um if we create a custom color profile for you to soft proof we can't always guarantee that we're going to use that that white point is going to be accurate and then the process of 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 actually sublimating you know applying pressure and heat can vary what we the amount of heat and pressure affects color and that can the amount that we need to use can vary from batch to batch as well so uh dye sublimation unlike an inkjet print is not a very exact science it, 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 uh, uh, i don't care who you are what lab you are you know you are going to run into variations uh from batch to batch and it's just because of the nature of it we use uh, i was going to get talk about this with our metal prints we use the most popular brand of metal panels for making metal prints it's a company called chromalux okay. and you think and they're based here in the u.s we, you know we're, we're happy about that that they are a u.s manufacturer i don't know if they manufacture the loom themselves but they do all the coating they apply that polymer coating but this is a white gloss sample right here. But we, and we buy these big sheets, huge sheets that we cut down. Within the same batches, Chrome Lux supplies us. We will see variations from white point. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll pick up a panel, cut it down, pick up the next panel, and that white point will be a little bit different. 
And that's within a, a very well known manufacturer here in the US uh, for these Chromebooks. They, they pr produce probably 90%, uh, 80 to 90% of the panels used in any, any of the major photo labs, color labs in the US are using the Chromebooks panels. And I, I've seen some of them offer color profiles for their metal prints. And I'm like, you know, that's great, but the white they're point doesn't stay. Yeah, you can't, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a mute point. And we know that from experience because we've been, we've been new metal prints now for, I think almost two years or at least a year, I don't know what it, and uh, we do a lot of them. Uh, I mean, we got three, four people sometimes. That's all they're doing all day. They're making metal prints. Right. So yeah, so that's where the the color variation comes on is basically the white point of the material is not stable enough to give a color match. Uh, so in a nutshell, that's why we're yeah. we're, uh, we're not yeah. able to offer the special but i will say this though on the feedback of customers um if you look at our social a lot of customers show you their actual prints of their mugs of their tiles um and of their cards um because i know cards the card stock is another uh, specialty item that people you know wonder about because there's no icc profile but a lot of our, our customers have really raved about the colors um, that they have gotten. And like I say, I don't recommend anybody on your first order where you're getting ready for a show to order the 100 mugs where you've never tested one to see first. We, we always re recommend, you know, you take your time with this, get it right. And when you're doing large mug orders and stuff like that, they're going to you're going to know what to expect and the yeah. variation will not be strong. Yeah. The, the variation that won't be like, we're not talking about, you know, one day your, your flowers yellow and the next day it's blue. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's going to be subtle. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, if, if you're doing a kind of a quick, you know, hard copy proof of a, like a coffee mug or a ceramic tile. Yeah. It's going to look, Pretty much like that next time around so uh you know just just give yourselves a little bit of allowance uh, for some slight shifts that only you may may notice um depending upon how discerning you are you know if it, you know some some people can't tell the difference mm -hmm. um some people have a better eye for detecting color variations than others so uh but uh, generally, it, it should be okay. Um, uh, you know, with dye sub is a uh, is a process that's that's never going to be as exact. And when I say dye sub, you know, a lot of these photo specialty items is never going to be as precise and exact as a digital print, inkjet print, just because the uh, uh, too many variables in the production process. It's not as automated as uh, print to uh, paper yeah. canvas. Yeah. So um, yeah, just give yourself a little room. And uh, you know, the, the only other thing I wanted to talk about was the wood prints, and and I think we'll pretty much have covered just about everything. Oh so, yeah. I mean, we might as well, right? Go for it. Yeah. I mean, it's just us. We're not holding up anybody, and. Um, yeah, it's going to be kind of quick. Um, I, I did want, oh, something popular, slates. Slates. <laughs> yeah. uh, and again, you can find those on our website um, under the specialty prints, correct? Yeah, yeah. Uh, slates are extremely popular. Um, uh, I like them more for photos. Uh, mm -hmm. Art looks great on them. We, we do have a number of artists that, that consistently print uh, lots of art on them. Uh, we do run into inventory issues on the slates mm -hmm. quite often uh, uh, because they are popular just nationwide with photo labs and we um, there's not a whole lot of companies that supply them we, we buy up a lot of them too mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so uh, but slates um, but uh, let's go on to uh, oh, what, one other thing with slates just keep in mind that the the, the edges are a little kind of Kind yeah. of so uh, when we say, I don't remember what the size of this, 
five by seven or something like this, five by eight, I don't know. Um, that is the dimension from, from here to here. So you do lose a little bit of your image. So make sure any of your important content is well within, you know, give yourself kind of a margin of maybe, maybe a like a, like a 16th or an eighth of about there. I, 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 I always say, Hey, any important content in your image, you know, bringing in a, at least an inch, but uh, you know, something that small, maybe quarter inch, you know, so wood, wood prints. Now we, uh, we are going back to basics, uh, but we, uh, we're, we're go we have two types of wood prints now. Um, for a while we were doing, uh, uh, a while back we started doing wood prints on birch mm -hmm. Yeah. And we were actually printing to a veneer and then we were adhering it a birch veneer and then adhering that to birch plywood, which is basically. Oh, you know, I think you're still on a share screen. Oh, think. Thank oh, so you. I see your share screen on a. So you didn't see when I was holding up the. Uh, the Hold on one second. I think it's just something on our live on our Facebook. Let's oh, see. Maybe it's the delay. It might be the delay. I think it's just time. There it goes. I just refreshed it. Um, the. Uh, so we we were printing to a veneer that we uh, we were coating that veneer. Uh, and a plywood is basically compressed bits of wood but sandwiched between veneers. So we're adding a second veneer that we were printing on, rolls of veneer. Um, and it looked pretty good, but we were having problems with the veneer coming off. So now we're switching to a method where we're actually just, you know, skipping the, <laughs> the rolled veneer. And we're, we're with a flatbed printer, uh, we're printing direct to the plywood. Okay. Um, we're still trying to perfect it, uh, just the sanding because the plywood is not, you know, the most pristine surface always. So we're, we're trying to be careful and selecting really, you know, good quality sheets of it. Um, but yeah, this is, is basic plywood that you might see at Home Depot. Um, it's a birch plywood, uh, and we're printing direct to it. Now the other method well, we before, do, before you leave that method, um, just because there's a quick question I can tell from just this example, white, how does, oh, yeah. how, how do you tell what's going to show wood and then white? Well, yeah, I, I'll, I'll, I was going to, yeah, I'll definitely cover that. But okay. let me go ahead and show the, the maple wood. Uh, then, right. I'll, then we'll talk about because that was the next part of it. Of okay. It. Oh, on this option, and we call this our birch, maybe uh, uh, these aren't supposed to be here, but uh, you'll have a wire hanger and a kind of a float bracket. So it kind of floats from the wall by mm -hmm. a uh, half an inch. Uh, the other option, uh, and we were offering up to 30 by 40, but we decided to stop um, when we brought in those new birch ones. We, we stopped at that 16 by 20. Are these maple wood ones? Now, these this is another Chrome Lux product, the same company that produces our metal prints, and they look great. They look really nice, and they sublimate very well, uh, as long as you're not doing too big. <laughs> uh, the problem that we were running into these, and why we we decided to stop at 16 by 20, is these are basically a veneer uh, around MDF. And these contain a ton of moisture. They take a long time to get that moisture out. And even then, the bigger ones, because they're so heavy, if people will lean them up against the wall and say, okay, I'll hang this up later because I'll have these nice little keyhole hangers. But after a day, they'll start to warp because of the weight. And so we, we were just running into a problem, not to mention the, the bigger ones are so heavy that shipping these without the their own weight damaging their corners has been very difficult. We had one lady that where we produced, we were producing a lot of 30 by 40s for her and just shipping them to Corpus Christi, Texas, which is three, three hours away. And uh, every other one was, I think, was arriving damaged in a three hour trip. And we were doing everything we could to package these. So we were just, the big ones do not work well. Plus the, the big ones just do not, sublimate well either. Uh, 
uh, I don't know if it has to do with our press, but I hear it from other people as well. They have problems sublimating big ones. So uh, we're deciding to limit these maple wood ones, even though they look really nice to smaller ones. So they're good for like plaques and awards and, and so forth. Now, uh, as far as white point, keep in mind, you know, uh, and the same thing with our metallic, uh, our, our metal prints uh, with, with the silver base, not the white base, the silver. You can't profile this because you don't have a white point. This right here is with, this is a silver gloss, mm -hmm. silver matte. There is no white because the printer doesn't print white. Now we do have a, we do have printers that print white uh, per se, but not, not for this type of product. Um, our, our solvent printer has a capacity to print white. This printer that printed this has a capacity to print white. But the idea behind this is not to print white. Otherwise, why not just print on paper and mount it to some to cool. plywood? Yeah. Uh, uh, the idea behind this is to to use the natural wood grain. Wood grain to kind of uh, to help accent the work to make it look something unique and different okay so yeah so you're not going to get pure white there is no pure white what you're going to do is you're going to get uh everything but white printed on here okay so whenever you do and use a non-white your your image is only going to be as white as 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 bright a white that the surface it's being printed on if your surface doesn't have any white on it, then it's not going to have any, your, your print is not going to have any white. Does that make sense? Do you think that? Uh, a little bit, because like on that one, you're seeing, um, I'm guessing that's a white background to do the uh, text that surrounds the image. And I'll, I'll show you. It has white in his shirt, but the, work, the, the white in the shirt shows up, as well as white on the teeth, those show mm -hmm. up. Um, I can show a kind of quick, simulation in Photoshop. Uh, uh, so uh, let's let's bring this image here again. Okay, and let's uh, we'll just continue this image, but let me put something up behind it. Okay. Um, maybe something with a uh, uh, this may not be the best example, but let's see if this works. Oh, let me share share my screen. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, oh, you know what? Let, let me select a couple of images and I'll share my screen. Let me get it ready. <laughs> Prep it, huh? Yeah, I, I have uh, that we use for a mock up. Mm -hmm. I have uh, some sample, uh, uh, what's it? uh, birch wood. <laughs> So uh, I'll use I'll use that, and where is it? Oh. Oh. I think that's it. No, that's not it. <laughs> yeah. So the the birch wood printing and the stickers contour printing are like two of the newest items that we've added um, along with the borderless uh, borderless deckled edge so those yeah. have all recently been added so if you're getting uh, ready for christmas inventory <laughs> yeah, so uh what i have here is some stock image of some birch that i used we, we use that actually to create uh mock-ups uh uh representational mock-ups for the website um so an example of what, what, what's happening in, in, in simulating Photoshop is I'm going to place an image and let's say I found a great image to use this with. Uh, now where'd it go? Uh, are you in Shutterstock images right now? Yeah. Um, well, I can use one of these. Use this, okay. So normally, if you were to print this uh, on on paper, you mm -hmm. white. 
but you can kind of simulate what's happening is when you're printing on on wood all this white disappears right when you're printing on silver all that white disappears so instead it's the same as if you're coming over here and selecting converting that to the multiply layer in photoshop so that's what you get what that multiply layer does that removes all the white mm -hmm. point in an image and then uh, adjust the tones accordingly so you can kind of simulate what you get whenever you print on uh, uh, a surface that's not white. You know, um, if we had the capacity to, to print on, uh, or, or we do have the capacity to print on a darker wood, problem with doing that, the darker the wood is, the harder it is going to be to see some of the darker details. And if you, you you have to be careful is not go too uh, too dark in the base tones because uh, uh, your colors become more dull and more muted uh, when you do that. So um, that's why with these uh, those maple woods because those are you know they look really nice, but yeah. they, uh, they're not as dark as a, a natural wood so the image looks a little nicer but uh that's only because they're manufactured that way there's a couple questions i know again from the geo galleries group uh who had asked about stuff on here um what we were going to be presenting one was if we had any photoshop templates available that already had our size which i told them on our on almost every one of our specialty products like mugs uh tiles we give the inches on there to make it but so, i i, I didn't I, I know actually, that was anything you looked at yeah yeah so uh we're trying to uh work out a system um uh, we, we have on our web servers we have these imaging libraries and uh it would be impossible for us to produce a a template for every single size combination i i, I get, theoretically we could but i mean it'd take forever so we're trying to figure out a way to be able to generate these dynamically now our imaging try not to get too technical here but our imaging library that runs on our server uh our, our main web server uh uh that may allow us to be able to generate these dynamically so one of the things we've been looking at is we're in in and uh let me go ahead and share my screen here real quick uh where's that screen share um and and i'm not for certain, but th this is what we're hoping to accomplish, is let's say you click on this, uh, this price here, um, uh, and, and it's for a three by three, it'll pop up an option for you to download a Photoshop or maybe an, an Illustrator, and an Illustrator which you can import into Photoshop, a template that shows you the guides and the lines so that you can, um, uh, then format your image in that template and upload it that way. So that's uh, that's in the kind of the developmental <laughs> development, or you know, is is it feasible for us to even do stage? I think we will. I I, just, I don't have a. I'm hoping we can do that before the end of the year. One other yeah. question that we had gotten was, um, of course, because we're in November, is our specials that are coming up, um, and we run one every year. At least I know for the three years I've been here, we've run one. Um, are we still doing Cyber Week? We will be doing Cyber Week. I don't know yet what the specials are, uh, but we will be doing a. a you know, we'll, we'll we we uh, we look at what we we think we can handle. <laughs> <laughs> before we determine what, what we're going to do. And uh, right now, uh, I think we're going to have some uh, good ones. We've uh, increased our manpower uh, quite a bit since last year. Um, so I feel, feel that we will be able to uh, meet the demand that's placed on us. Uh, just keep in mind that uh, uh, during the Christmas season, the turnaround time does seem to slow down. Um, so uh, uh, just because we, we just have a lot more orders and we, we can't always predict how how many orders we're going to get um so we try to uh be uh be as prepared as as, as much as possible 
Right. So yeah, just kind of um, look at our site and um, your newsletter. We'll be having the Cyber Week specials coming out on there. And uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll probably be giving you guys some deadlines uh, for Christmas deliveries as well. So those will be coming up around the end of Cyber Week. So that way y'all know um, when those yeah. orders have to be placed to meet Christmas deliveries. We didn't do first Tuesday last uh, week. week because of the election, but um, uh, our next one for this uh, December, December what what day? December first, I think, right? I think so the like, second it falls on, yeah, December first. Yeah, um, we're going to have um, Jim Landers of Landers Photography uh, speak. Landers Photography and Photo School. He has a very, uh, or he's he's been running a, a successful photography school here in San Antonio. He's also a close personal friend of Melissa and I. Um, and uh, uh, he's going to really uh, deliver a great, great lesson uh, uh, relating to photography uh, next month. Um, uh, so anyway, well, That's I'm-, I'm awesome about I'm about to lose my voice here. So okay. you've done a good job. You've carried it really far. Um, yeah. so again, well, I'll have all of this up on YouTube, guys. Thank you for uh, joining us back on Facebook. We really appreciate that um, for following us over because uh, we had that technical issue with uh, the the Zoom bombers. But um, we'll have this whole thing pieced together in its entirety up on YouTube uh, by the end of the week. And uh, just hit that subscribe and notify and. Uh, I'm sure James will send out a newsletter with a link to this as well. So that way you guys can see it.